Hi everyone, so welcome to another video. Uh, thanks for all the comments, thanks for watching these videos. Um, it came up in the comments that maybe I could do a video talking more about my research. And I would love to do a video talking about my research. Um, so if you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Caroline. I'm a UK-based physics lecturer um, and my specialist area is nuclear physics. So hopefully in a future video, I'll make one where I chat a little bit about actually the kind of work and the kind of projects that we do. But I thought in this one, maybe I could talk about how I try to create a research group identity and how I work with students and student projects to let us kind of form a bit of a, a research group around my specialist area. Um, so if you're an academic working at a university, you're probably very familiar with this idea that as a lecturer, and I'm a UK based lecturer, so that means that my job involves both doing research and doing teaching. But for the research part, it's really important that I grow a research group that supports PhD students, undergraduate students and some postdoctoral researchers. And I was kind of looking back over my records and I think I've had oh loads of student projects where I've been the supervisor um, and a real mix, you know, quite a few bachelor's programs, bachelor's program projects. Oh, this, is, this is going to be a tongue twister. I've supervised bachelor's program students master's programme students um, and PhD students and summer interns. Um, and it's really, really important that for each of those students, their project has their own identity. So, you know, even if I've got two students working on a similar topic, it's important that they both have their own focus so that when they come to write it up, they're able to make a novel con contribution to our physics topic in their own specific, unique research area. So as a as an academic member of staff, your time can get very, very busy. Um, so you're, you're kind of juggling supervising students, teaching the undergraduates, trying to do a bit of your own research. Um, I'm on like conference organisation committees. I'm on grant reviewing committees, trying to write my own research review grants. I'm the admissions tutor. There's there's just an awful lot of activities going on. So I try to implement a little bit of a kind of a, a strategy to allow me to maintain control over my student projects. So the first thing that I tend to do is I split the week. And the first part of the week, I tend to focus on my undergraduate student projects. So if I've got a bachelor's project going on, maybe I've got an integrated master's student who's doing a project. So typically my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll be focusing there on the undergraduate projects. Wednesday is also when I do my supervision for the undergraduates who I'm personal tutor for. And then on Thursday and Friday, I tend to flip over and I focus on my PhD students. Um, I don't know why <laughs> I've got this kind of pattern going on, but I kind of quite like it because it means, you know, the start of the week, I'm focusing on the kind of the undergraduate projects and their requirements. And the end of the week, I'm looking at the kind of the more advanced PhD projects and their needs. Um, and the needs are different between the two groups. So for my undergraduate students, when they're doing their final year project, um, they're only with me for 12 weeks. And that's a really quick length of time. Whilst the PhD students, they tend to be with me for three to four years. Um, and that impacts then what I do when I chat the students in the meetings. So, you know, typically each week I'll schedule somewhere between a half an hour to an hour meeting for each student, depending on their project requirements. And for the undergraduates, I tend to set weekly targets. Um, so obviously it's in consultation with the student, it's their project, they have ownership of the direction of travel of their research. I've typically set them an idea, an area to work in. Um, at the start of the project, I'm very much kind of leading the direction of travel. And then as we get to the latter half of the project, I try to make it so that the kind of the, the power, if you like, of the project gets over to them and they get to kind of shape where they want to go in the direction that they want to kind of complete their studies. Um, but as I said, for the undergraduate students, I tend to have it so that we have a weekly target, um, just a couple of bullet points. I keep a bit of a, a running diary, a running calendar of notes from each meeting. And then each week we just check in on the progress. Did you manage to meet the target? Were there challenges? Were there problems? What caused you issues? And then we set another target for the next week. Um, and I find the weekly targets for those projects is really good because they're so short. You know, it's a 12 week project. And it's really important as the supervisor that I stay on it 
Uh, so if there's any problems, I can jump in and I can try to troubleshoot and fix things because I know that those students need to write their report at the end of 12 weeks. So yes, I want them working on something cool and exciting, but at the same time, I want to make sure that they're going to have the content to be able to write their report at the end of the three months. Now, with my PhD students, it's a bit different. So I'm obviously going to have them working in the research group for three and a half, four, four years. Um, and so I don't set weekly targets with the PhD students. Um, at the moment, I'm still all meeting my PhD students once a week. Uh, obviously, I see them more than that. You know, typically I'll see them in labs. I'll see them in like the breakout room in the physics department. But each week we try to have not a formal, but just a chat, you know, a, a 30 to 45. Sometimes there's an hour long chat each week. And with the PhD students, we tend to work in month long chunks. So rather than saying this week, do this, this week, do this, we try to set some goals for the month. Um, that will be a mixture of tasks. So it could be, you know, drafting something for a conference. They could be doing an experiment. They might be doing some modeling. They might be doing some data analysis. It could be a bit of networking and collaboration type work. Collaboration type work. Um, but yeah, for them, I just find that the month time scale is much easier because some weeks they'll have a very productive week and some weeks things at the university will take longer. You know, if they're trying to set up an experiment. Sometimes there's a health and safety procedure they need to go through. There's extra training we need them to do. Sometimes there's issues with the computer codes not compiling. And I think, you know, having weekly targets would be too much pressure. So we go with monthly. Um, and again, like the undergraduate students, but even more so with the PhD students, I'm trying to make sure that at the end of that three year PhD, the researcher is very, very independent. So again, they'll be working on a PhD topic that you know, I've come up with. It'll be typically a research idea that I've got funding for that I'd like a student to work on. And so for the first year of that PhD, you know, it will be you know, the supervisor leading the direction of travel. So I'll be suggesting things to do, the direction we can take the project, the key kind of outputs. But then in the second, third and maybe the fourth year, I want it to be much more that they start to take over the ownership of where they would like the project to go. You know, they suggest ideas, they are thinking about which experiments would be useful for the goal that we're trying to assess. And then as the supervisor, I become like the kind of the springboard dialogue, I guess. I'm the person that they can kind of share their ideas with. I'll give my input, I'll suggest what might work, challenges, people they could work with, different pieces of equipment. Um, and I think as the supervisor, I try to help try to help them as they kind of hold their accountability throughout the project. So I try to make sure that we have got novel investigation lines of scientific inquiry that will lead to a novel PhD. Um, I try to make sure that the experiments they're proposing are reasonable and we can actually do them. Sometimes, you know, I want to challenge them to be, you know, push their experiment to maybe a slightly harder level to get more detail out of it. Uh, and then every six months with my PhD students, we have a formal review. So after all these kind of these weekly chats and monthly targets, every six months we sit down, we have a proper review. It includes all the supervisors and the supervisory team. So your first supervisor, your second supervisor, your supervisor from industry. Um, it's more formal. You know, we kind of assess the progress. The, the PhD student assesses their progress. The supervisors assess the progress. Um, at the end of the second year, this uh, Appraisal kind of process involves getting your content sheet ready for your thesis so you can see if the chapters are starting to form nicely. And it's just, again, a, a, more, robust, a more robust check that the students are making good progress. So, yeah, I tend to manage the projects differently depending on the level of the student. Um, and the other thing I try to do is I try to obviously coordinate these projects to make a research identity for the group that I'm growing. So my area is radiation and nuclear physics. Um, it goes across several areas. So I'm an applied physicist. So I try to do things with the physics that's going to help the wider community. So that might be a medical application, an environmental application, the wider nuclear industry, nuclear security. And so what I do is I have students working on radiation and nuclear physics problems, but applied to different applications. So somebody might be working on something for medical physics and somebody might be working on something, I don't know, for uh, kind of environmental monitoring. And then within that, I also kind of divide the type of work that we do. So some of my students will be very experimental focused and typically we are developing new kinds of material. So we're developing new approaches to measure radiation. And then the other kind of part of my group is looking at new computational techniques 
or applying analysis methods to get the most out of the radiation signatures that we're measuring. So I've kind of got this kind of area where we're all doing measurement of radiation in nuclear physics. The end applications will be different between the students and some of them will be focused more on novel detection and the experimental work and some of them will be focused more on the novel computational work and analysing the signals. Um, so that's very much my PhD students. I try to get my master students, so I have one year physics master students and summer master students, I try to get them aligned into this portfolio so they're working on a topic that fits within this theme. And then for my bachelor students, some of them will align to this portfolio and sometimes my bachelor's students I pick something that's maybe a little bit on the edges of my research area or taking a technique that we've used on one subject and just kind of pushing it onto a different area because the, the undergraduate students are a great opportunity to try kind of a, a new idea out and then assess whether we want to move it into the main kind of core programme and for that idea to evolve and become maybe a master's student project or a PhD project. So yeah, slightly different projects, I guess, with the different students. Um, and also I'm always trying to think about the student output and where can the student show their work. But I will save that for a future video. So I have a bit of a plan about how I have students focus towards conferences and journal papers and meetings, but I will save that for a future video. So do let me know in the comments, how do you organize your research group? Are you in the process of forming a research group? Do you have a very clear research area or are you still trying to find your research area? Um, I'll chat more about my research topic as we go forward over the next few videos. But have a good few weeks. We're getting towards the end of semester. So you're probably busy either marking or writing assignments or doing assessments. So I hope things are going well. As always, this is a very academic focused channel. So I post every Monday, uh, UK time, 10 o'clock. So do like, do subscribe, leave me a comment. Have a great week and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.